Good afternoon, Sea Wolves, and welcome to the Stony Brook Media Group's Homecoming Live Show. I'm Anthony Johnson. And I'm Daniela Rodriguez. We have an exciting show for you all as we count down to the kickoff of today's game. Our Stony Brook Sea Wolves are facing off against the Maine Black Bears. And we have reporters stationed at different locations around campus to showcase the day's festivities. To kick off the beginning of the homecoming celebrations, last night was the 12th annual Sea Wolf Showcase, which took place at the Stoller Steps. Jane Montalto and Sydney Riddle were there to capture all of the action. This past Friday night was the 12th annual Sea Wolf Showcase. The tradition is a spotlight for campus performance groups to share their talents with their fellow students. Earlier this week, we spoke to KBS dance team during their rehearsal to hear their thoughts going into this year's showcase. I'm really excited. I'm looking forward not only for like our performance, but also see like all the other groups because all the other groups always come out with something really exciting and good. As they prepared for this year's event, KBS dance team members looked back fondly on previous showcase performances. The last one was so crazy because it was my first one ever. So of course it was very nerve wracking, very scary, a lot of things going on, but it was also just a really cool experience. We were third to last, I believe. Um, which was just, just, just really cool, and we got to watch like all the other performances before us. So it was just it was a really like inspiring experience for us. When I joined as a freshman, it was during COVID, so like that whole year, I didn't really get to experience really much of the dance team. So sophomore year, fast forward, um, I did it only during the fall because Sea Wolf Showcase is only during the fall. So I've only done it once. So yeah, it's really big and I didn't expect people, like a lot of people show up. It's like humongous. So many people come at Stellar Steps. And it was really cool because we actually ended up filming our first performance last year. And I think a lot of people said like they really liked our performance. They really enjoyed it. Yeah, so it was really cool. Me personally, I'm really bad with like being nervous and stuff because I always get nervous, like not even the day of. It's like like a few minutes before the performance starts. So right now I haven't even processed that the Siebel Showcase is like this week basically but um i'm just trying to make sure i don't get like too shaken up about it i think like we're prepared and let the nerves come in like seconds before we get on stage but after that i think we've prepared enough that it'll look good at this year's showcase kbs dance team once again wowed the audience with their energy on stage They were one of many talented groups that captured the crowd of students. Other organizations also graced the stage at Stoller Steps last night. The 12th annual Sewell Showcase was a success, leaving students excited for next year. Jane Montalto, Stony Brook Media Group. And now let's toss it over to our friend Andrew Candio, who's at Laval Stadium with Stony Brook's undergraduate student government president, Ocean Kareem. Well, thank you. And I'm here with the wonderful Ocean, who's the president of USG, the undergraduate student government, responsible for so many wonderful events at Stony Brook. How are you feeling today, Ocean? Hi, I'm doing all right, feeling okay. Um, I'm also a little bit hungry too in the process, so I might, after this, I might go to the barbecue section and get some food as well, and just try some things out. We call you some food right now. But um, can you explain what USG does and the events that they're behind? Yes, of course. So USG, or the Undergraduate Student Government, we are essentially the um, 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated towards <laughs> all the clubs on campus, making sure that they're adequately funded so they can do all their amazing activities, their amazing GBMs, and garner student life. On top of that, we host a lot of events, and we also do a lot of advocacy efforts as well, whether it be for environmental um, justice or um, whether it be for experience accessibility, whether it be for Title IX or any other things and such. We help with a lot of advocacy efforts and many other things as well. So long as there's an initiative, we help out with that kind of thing as well. And how is USG involved when it comes to homecoming? So, USG when it comes to homecoming, um, we kind of do help with the promotions from things here to there and such. Um, 
We also just bring in a lot of awareness of what Homecoming is, a lot of the safety and things and such. We also help out with supporting the other organizations in their participation with Homecoming in itself. We do believe that student life is pretty much the biggest part of Stony Brook in itself, and student life comes from the student organizations themselves. So us being in USD here to help out student organizations with their functionalities is pretty much the biggest things that we try to do. And when it comes to future events and things that we have to look in store for, what is there, what should the student body be looking for when it comes to this USG events? So, besides homecoming, because that's definitely one of the biggest things happening right now, we do have Spooky Brook. Spooky Brook is happening on the 29th of October. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's a lot of talks all working together. It's a whole conglomerate kind of event and such. So there's that. Um, Whittling Jean, our VP of Student Life, is the one that's helping that out, along with Isaiah Daniels and Tanisa Rahman. So be sure to check out Spooky Brook. It's going to be really fun. It's going to be in the Student Activity Center, um, pretty much all around and within the building. Um, on top of that, we have like the Brook happening soon. My office is going to be taking care of that November 9th. So if you want to check that out, that's also going to be really fun. And a little question here. You yeah. may not be able to answer it. Who could we expect for Brookfest? Mm, mm. I'm going to have to plead the fifth on that. Okay, okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, wonderful, our wonderful president of our USG, uh, representing our student body, Ocean. Thank you for having, thank you for coming here and being interviewed. We're, we're greatly appreciated. And thank you for everything that you do for the student body. Back to you guys at the studio. Thank you, Andrew. And Ocean kind of left us on the, edge of our sheet, on, on the edge of our seats there about Brookfest, but I'm looking forward to finding out eventually about that. But in the meantime, let's turn to our reporter, Justin Mitzelmaker, to fill us in on what's going on at the homecoming tailgate. Justin? Hi, Anthony. Hi, Daniela. So we are here at the official homecoming tailgate, and it's been one continuous party from start to finish, I suppose. And I'm joined now with my good friend and amazing meteorologist, Skylar J. Harmon. Hello, everyone. Hi, lovely to be here. It's a beautiful day. So we are, Skylar, how would you describe the energy right now? Because I think it's really, really exciting. I, I feel all the music going through my veins. But, but in your words, what would you say? What are we seeing right now today? There is just such an infectious amount of energy surrounding us on all fronts. The music, the noise, the genuine enjoyment of everyone. It's just absolutely a pleasure to be here. I think for more than just us, I think for everyone. And there are sea wolves around us of all ages. Just behind the camera, we see a little league team. It looks like they're wearing jerseys, maybe a, a football team from a local elementary school. We have dance music going on behind us, those white pitch tents. That is where you can find the barbecue, which we will be coming back to a bit later for an official taste test. We have the dance floor going. We have a DJ, a photo booth. There's a whole carnival. I heard Skylar, a little birdie, told me that you went down the slide. I wasn't able to go down the slide. I think I'm a little too big. But how was your experience, Skylar? You know, it was it was fun. I am just here to have a good time today, and I think that there's many opportunities for that. What is your favorite homecoming game, carnival game specifically? There was a game that I played where you had to throw a ball to knock out teeth and something. It was like the cavity something or other. My parents are in dentistry, so I think that's my favorite just because it gives me a little bit of nostalgia, a feeling of home, if you will. I love that. I love that. So for me, I really liked all the merch that they had there. It's my last year. It's my last homecoming, which makes me so, so upset. But I'm so happy I get to spend it with all of you. Uh, but after this, I'm definitely going to be getting my hands on some merch and some amazing maroon t-shirts and little cute teddy bears and wolfies. I think that's like the cutest part for me. But um, so much more coming up ahead. We have dance teams. We have desserts. And it's just really, like I said, one big party. So what do you guys think back in the studio? Do you wish you were here? Be honest. Back to you guys. Certainly wish we were there. It looks so fun out there. We'll see you guys later. In the meantime, being a student athlete not only takes a toll on an athlete's physical health, but their mental health as well. Reporter Lauren Canavan chatted with Claire Lewis of PAWS, a student athlete run organization here on campus. Stony Brook University has a storied history in athletics. Division I athletes walk among us and are held to high standards both in the classroom and during competition. Claire Lewis is on the executive board of PAWS, a group that focuses on mental health for athletes. So PAWS is positive assurance with support. Um, it is a student athlete run mental health group. Um, our moderator is Elizabeth Zanoli or Z. Um, 
what we do is we set up events that are supposed to cater towards mental health. Um, we set up chalk events, um, coloring pages. We tabled at Holinsky's Hope. Recently, Athletics and Paws joined together to participate in the Center of Prevention and Outreach's Walk of Hope, a suicide prevention walk. I wanted to join Paws because I have myself struggled with mental health. I've been an athlete for over 14 years now, I believe, and I wanted to be someone who I have a voice, I have a platform, I want to use it for the better. It gets hectic being a Division I athlete with up to four hours of practice a day, 20 hours a week, competitions, rehab, film if you have that, it's a lot. So it's easy to kind of slide your mental health under the rug. With midterm season underway, Lewis has some mental health advice to share with her fellow athletes. It's okay to not be okay. Um, you're supported, you're wanted, you're loved, you're valued, no matter what happens in your sport, at home, in the classroom, like you are worthy, we want you here. Lauren Canavan, Stony Brook Media Group. Coming up next, we will be joined in the studio by Stony Brook University's Vice President for Equity and Inclusion and Chief Diversity Officer, Judy Brown-Clark, who was recently named to the National Fitness Foundation's Board of Directors. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, welcome back to the Stony Brook Media Group's homecoming live show. Let's check in with Skylar Day Harmon, who is live at the tailgate with the weather update. Skylar? It is a beautiful day for a football game, Seabulls. We're looking at a high of 67 with a low of 42, 43-ish this evening. It's around 65 degrees, warming up gradually to that high of 67. It is going to be sunny all day, absolutely beautiful. A lovely, lovely day for a football game. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Skylar. It looks so beautiful out there. And now joining us in the studio is Stony Brook University's Vice President for Diversity and Inclusion. And she was recently named to the um, National Fitness Board. We're here with Judy Brown Clark. <laughs> Long <laughs> intro. You have a lot of titles there. Absolutely. So so congratulations on being appointed to the Board of Directors for the National Fitness Foundation. This is an immense honor, and what does that mean to you? Um, for me, I'm really excited because it brings in every aspect that's important to me and things that are important to us as a nation. So fitness, nutrition, food insecurity, social determinants of health, so all the lessons learned from COVID. Yeah, and that sounds very exciting. You know, mindfulness, especially in this time you mentioned, COVID yes. is a big part of, you know, a lot of people's anxieties. Right. So what can students do, specifically at the Stony Brook, in the Stony Brook community, yeah. to kind of ease their worries, you know, coming out of COVID and kind of transitioning back to this new normal? So I think probably the most difficult thing is um, a lot of people we lost. So there's a lot of loss, drama, trauma. People lost jobs, they lost their lives, they lost their livelihood, they lost things that, that really gave them a sense of, or normalcy. And so I think the, the thing that I would um, really help students learn to kind of embrace of what you can and can't control. Other things you can control, it's like to put your time and energy into that. The things that you can control is that you use systems and individuals in power to really help you navigate those. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. And mental health is a big struggle that everybody, you know, has gone through and faces. But specifically student athletes, there's organizations like PAWS yeah. and Morgan's Message on campus. Do you think that enough is being done for student athletes and students as a whole for mental health struggles? I think mental health is so complex. Typically, you have mm -hmm. mental health within a context, you know, the context of 
of higher education, being away from home, you know, the, the struggle of, of doing academics and so on. But then it's been compounded with so many things that are happening nationally. So I don't think there's ever enough. I think it's, it's, it's really things that are done centralized and decentralized. So things done through student groups, things done individually, self-care is important, as well as our programs and our services. And you did just mention self-care. Another big thing that particularly student athletes do, possibly to kind of balance their hectic schedules, is going to the gym and exercising regularly. Yeah. Do you think that if the whole student body were to adopt those type of practices, would that be beneficial? It absolutely would for those that that's an outlet. For some people, it may just be sitting very quietly. And some, it is like they play as hard as they can and feel exhausted and it gives yeah. them a chance to really use that as a diversion. So I think it's to find out, you know, what works best for you mm -hmm. and then make that a priority. It should be on your calendar and it should be something that you don't have to um, uh, defend mm -hmm. and you don't have to negotiate uh, with others. It's, it's, it's a key. And as we approach the end of the semester, there are so many things that students struggle with, with finals, projects, right. all that stuff. What are some ways that students can ease their struggles with, you know, in terms of self-care? How can students remind themselves that they are important too? I think probably the most important thing is to realize that you're not alone. I think many times when you're struggling either academically, personally, and so on, is that you feel like that this is something that there aren't, there's not a community that's feeling that same way. So. Um, having the courage yeah. to say, I'm, I'm struggling, and I need some help, and I need some intervention. Um, the other piece of that is, is really, it's like listening to your body. Um, so between study, study groups, papers, tests, and so on, there's a lot of demands, but the only one that's going to advocate for you and what you need is you. And then also with that, a lot of students, how can they find the courage to speak up and seek help? So the thing that I, I always say, um, because I, I think pe uh, students will make themselves centric, like I don't want to draw attention to myself, I don't, I'll figure this out, is to really focus on the, the, the greater good and that people are waiting for you. They're waiting for your time, your talent, your advocacy, your championship, your social justice, and all the things that are keeping them up at night. They're praying for you. So you being successful is answering the prayers of that uh, that that people are currently experiencing and when you center that it allows you to to really focus on um, you know the end result graduating and focusing in a little bit more on you you are an Olympic silver medalist in your day and that's a, an incredible honor Thank did you, you ever uh, struggle with anything or did you find any support when you needed it I struggled with everything <laughs> like everyone else I think sometimes we look at people's accomplishments and it doesn't necessarily um, reflect the fact that there's struggle. So absolutely, you know, for every win, I've probably had 10 losses. And so that resiliency and tenacity and, and the ability to um, be scrappy and to come back into, you know, focus on my goal is something that I learned. So I, I think, you know, being an athlete has helped me, you know, throughout my personal and professional career. Yeah. Thank you so much. That was some really sound advice. Oh, I think thanks. that our students and our viewers watching can take a lot from the stuff you shared from, to us today. It's my yeah. pleasure. Yeah. Go Sea Wolves. Yes, go Sea Wolves. That's we right. We can win that game today, too. <laughs> with that knowledge. Thank you so much for joining us again. Absolutely. That was Judy Brown Clark. 2022 marks 10 years since the Stony Brook baseball team complete, competed in the College World Series. To look back at this momentous occasion, we go to Andrew Candio, who is live at Laval Stadium, with head coach Matt Sank and former catcher and outfielder Pat Cantwell. Well, thank you, Andrew. Um, I'm here with Matt Sank, the head, the head coach of the baseball team, who's very acquainted with success when it comes to baseball being named National Coach of the Year by the Baseball Writers Association. He's entering his 33rd season with a record of 898 wins, 612 losses, accounting for a 59% win total percentage. And this is a, truly an honor as we talk about the 2012 um, championship um, and world and series that you guys had, where you guys had a total of 94 wins. And 27 losses, having a 77% win percentage. Can you explain how you were able to do that and what was vital to the success of the team? Yeah, well, thanks for having us and happy homecoming to everybody. Um, the way that, uh, we're, that we're successful, like any business, uh, any team, it really comes down to the players. Uh, 
You know, that's always been uh, the way I've, I've uh, kind of gone about things. And I had tremendous assistant coaches that went and got us great players. And our players came here and everybody was all in. And it just led to a lot of success. Being the fourth seed and, every, and all that, was there any pressure, or outside noise or doubt of winning this championship? Well, um, you know, the seeding really uh, didn't matter to us. Uh, because in order to get to where we got to, if we were the first seed or the fourth seed, we still were going to have to win as many games as we did. And, uh, and so uh, we looked at every challenge as an opportunity and, uh, and you know, the seeding and, and things like that was not really a concern to us. What challenges and obstacles that you guys face, how are you able to motivate your team and keep them pushing towards that success? Yeah, well... Again, you know, in order to do something as uh, as great as that team did, uh, you know, it was uh, something I used to share with them was, uh, you know, it's not motivated people that become successful. It's self-motivated people. And I had a bunch of, of guys that were just self-motivated. And, uh, you, know, you know, there wasn't a lot that I had to do because they were they were more than willing to do whatever it took. Thank you. Thank you. Can, you can you show the ring at the camera? Yeah, can you sure, just point absolutely. it? That's such a beautiful ring right there. And I'm also here with the catcher, Patrick Cantwell, um, being a part of the 2012 team. What was like the thoughts and the process going through your mind? You got a whole process of going through the playoffs and winning and all that stuff. Like, how are you able to stay motivated? And what was going through the team's mind? Uh, again, like Coach said, thank you for having us. Um, it was a true team effort. Obviously, Coach says the players made us great, but um, himself, Coach Panucci, Coach Marin, you know, they always put us in a position to win. So uh, the motivation just came from us wanting to play longer together. You know, it's senior season for a bunch of us, and, you know, when, when the season season's over, uh, that that's it. So we wanted to play as long as we could with that group of guys, and Travis and Willie and Max and, and the rest of those guys, Tyler, um, you know, it, it was one of those things where it was fun to show up every day. It was fun to play. There was no added pressure, and we just kind of went out and, and did our thing. After this series and all that, you know, being 2012, how have you continued to stay connected with baseball? So I currently work with the Texas Rangers. Um, I'm from Long Island, so I like to come back and help coach out with the catchers whenever I can. Uh, probably come back out a little bit more this offseason, but uh, Stony Brook is home to me. It's only a 20-minute drive from where I grew up, so... I'm forever grateful to the university for the opportunities that have presented Coach Sank and Coach Benucci for recruiting me and, um, you know, I'm Seawolf for life and, and baseball for life. So, uh, again, just incredibly grateful. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm truly honored to be in their presence, a winning tradition as he continues to carry it, hopefully within this season. So thank you guys and back to the studio to you guys. Thanks so much, Andrew. We love our Seawolves and we love baseball. Now let's see what, what game Skyler has chosen to play. I'm here at the Kenneth P. Laval Stadium parking lot where the tailgate is happening. There are so many fun things to do. There's a carnival, inflatable axe throwing, and behind me, one of many slides. Let's get into it. We're here at the Cavity Knockout to test my hand-eye coordination. Hopefully yours is better than mine. <laughs> this is a great way to ring in homecoming, so grab your friends, grab your family, grab some drinks and some food, and have a great time, Seawolves. She looks like she's having a lot of fun. She does. <laughs> that looks like a lot of fun down there. When we return from the break, Justin will be joined by Stony Brook's Vice President for Student Affairs, Rick Gatto. Stay with us. <laughs>
Welcome back to Homecoming Live, brought to you by the Stony Brook Media Group. I'm Anthony Johnson. And I'm Daniela Rodriguez. Let's check back in with Justin Mitzelmaker, who is live at the tailgate with Stony Brook's Vice President for Student Affairs, Rick Gateau. Justin? That's right, Andrew, Anthony. The party just keeps on going at the tailgate. And now we're joined with our favorite Seawolves, one of our favorite Seawolves of all time, Vice President of Student Affairs, Rick Gateau. Rick, how are you today? I am great. Thank you so much for the invitation to say hello. We're so excited to welcome everyone to homecoming this year. We're so excited to have you here and to be amongst the celebrations with you. So tell us, what does homecoming mean to you? Well, I love homecoming because it brings back all of our alumni, our friends. It's really a celebration of Stony Brook University. Um, so I'm just so thrilled. There's a lot of red here today, and we're really excited about that. So thank you for everyone for being here. And you've been an honorary Seawolf for quite some time now. How many years exactly? How many homecomings have you experienced? I'm not supposed to say, but it's really 20 years I've been at Starbucks, so 20 homecomings, and they truly, they get better and better every year. Describe your first homecoming to us compared to now. How have things shifted in the past 20 years? Um, there are people here. <laughs> <laughs> I think back in the day, we didn't really even have the crowds. It just wasn't that kind of level of excitement. Now we're getting so many more people to come back to homecoming. I think people, I just, actually, I just met with some alums today. They walked into the new UCC and they said, this wasn't here when we were here, and I think they're just so impressed with how the campus have, has grown. I mean, the beautiful buildings, the beautiful grounds that we all live on and work in, and I think it's just amazing for everyone to come back and enjoy. Right, and Stony Brook University, it's such a unique blend. We have transfer students, we have commuters, we have undergrad, graduate students. We have everyone here, and we really don't discriminate. So let us know, why is homecoming important to the student community and, and to Stony Brook as a whole? Well, I think so homecoming is important from my point of view because it's a chance for faculty, staff, students, visitors, all to come together. And I also love it's a wonderful opportunity for our current students to, in fact, interact with alumni. And so by bringing those together, I think alumni ultimately do support our students, whether it's about jobs or internships, giving advice, mentoring. I think this is one way to start forming those relationships. Right. So vice president for student affairs, how does that bridge between the student, the current student population and the alumni? And what was your involvement in, in planning this momentous day? So our team is very involved. We actually do a lot of events leading up to homecoming today. And so we have our homecoming royalty, which is going to be announced at halftime. And we also lead a big event that happened last night called the Siebel Showcase. It was spectacular. We had 23 of our clubs and organizations singing, dancing, the most amazing choreography. And so I know I could never do that. So when I see them on stage, it's just spectacular. We had over probably 2,000 people, if not more, at Staller Steps last night. So if you haven't joined in those traditions, um, we hope next year you'll be part of it. I have been a Seawolf now going on my fourth year. It's my last year, but I must say Seawolf Showcase is my favorite night out of the year at this school. Why is Seawolf Showcase so special to you? I love it because it shows the tradition of diversity, of culture. When I just see the colors of costumes, the different, you know, really students from all over the world participate. And, and to me, it just shows also the talent of students and things that they do outside because we have a lot of bright students at Stony Brook. And if I walk by somebody, I don't think I'd know on a normal day that they could dance like they do. And sure enough, they're on stage last night showing everything they got. So it just, to me, it shows their teamwork, their ability to, you know, really let loose and have fun and, and I think show all of the cultural heritage that they bring to Stony Brook and they get to display it on stage for everybody to see. That's so true. Well, I don't know if you're running for homecoming royalty this year, <laughs> but for my final year, I would love to see you on that field with a crown and staff in your hand. I hope we can make that happen one day. <laughs> well, I was in the court at my undergrad, so it's nice to come back and actually crown the next group. Amazing. The Vice President for Student Affairs, everyone, Rick Gatto, thank you for joining us today. Pleasure. Thank you. One more question. One more question before we go, because we just can't get enough of you. Um, <laughs> tell me, homecoming in three words, how would you describe it? Lively, exciting, community. community. I think it's, to me, it's all about bringing people together in the spirit of what Stony Brook is, which I think is just is an amazing, caring, diverse community. And that's what we value. And you know, being together as, as just as a community. I think that's what speaks to why, you know, why we are who we are. Community, that's right. And that is where we are today at this never ending party, it seems. Rick, thank you so much again for joining us. Back to you in the studio.
Justin, thank you so much for uh, having our King Rick with us. What do you think? That was awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. Lively, exciting, and community. Those are also three words that go back to music. So. Definitely. And between the different instruments and charming music, we owe a lot of our homecoming spirit to the Stony Brook Marching Band. Anastasia Poulos and Won Sun Jung tell us more. The Stony Brook Athletic Band were in the middle of practice for the upcoming homecoming football game. As the homecoming game is a large scale event where alumni and students gather, the athletic band is also responsible for showing diverse band music and performance. Hey, I'm Dr. Justin Stollerick. I'm the director of bands here at Stony Brook, and this is my fifth year. This is the 17th year of the marching band. It was established in 2006. Um, we play at a variety of events on campus, football games and basketball primarily, but also soccer and volleyball, as well as um, other on-campus and off-campus events. The very first performance of the Spirit of Stony Brook was on October 7th, 2006 at Homecoming, and that was the very first year the band was formed. Homecoming games have an important implication for athletic band because they will work together with the alumni bands. Therefore, the athletic band members are expecting more than ever and preparing for the homecoming game. So our homecoming game is a special one. We actually have our alumni from past bands join us and play with us during halftime. So there is a lot of preparation in arranging the music for it, such that it's representative of up students that they've played in the past. And we can want to capture that as best as possible. And homecoming is always special with the students that go there. They really have a lot of pride at homecoming. So we want to make sure we do our best at sounding as good as possible, looking as good as possible, and really capturing the spirit on campus. I'm super excited about this halftime show in particular. It's going to be great. And having alumni band with us, uh, people who were in the band at one time, uh, is, is exciting for them because they get to come back and relive their glory years. Uh, on the field, and it's also exciting for our members because they get to play side by side with um, alums of the band. Um, I do try to make sure that the halftime shows for Homecoming are kind of related to something alums would understand. This week's show is Dance Marathon of the Decades, and we're doing um, favorite dance tunes from the 2010s, 2000s, 90s, 80s, 70s, 60s, and all the way back to 1957, the year Stony Brook was founded. So trying to have an entertaining show, but also sort of pull in something that would work well for homecoming. Athletic band members encourage students to come and enjoy homecoming games. What's fun about going to football games is just being outside with your friends, having a great time. You don't even have to like sports to have a great time at a football or a basketball game. It's just about being with your friends and being with your people um, and just enjoying the vibe, enjoying the, the music that the band is playing and enjoying the energy of the game. You can expect us to be very energetic, very live. And if you ever wondered what spirit and pride is like on campus, come to homecoming and we'll capture every aspect of it. For Stony Brook Media Group, this is Won Sun Jung and Anastasia Polos. Next, we're gonna go back to Skylar and Justin who are in the parking lot with some fans. Skylar, Justin. Hi, Anthony. So we are joined now with some young sea wolves. Uh, how are you guys doing today? Very good. So introduce yourselves for us. What are your names? How old are you? And what brings you here today? Um, my name is Will. I'm nine, and we're just here to watch the football game. My name's Sam. I'm 12, and I'm here to watch the football game. <laughs> nice. So, Sam, you have a little bit to go until you're applying for college. Is Stony Brook one of your top choices? It's in my top five. Nice. So what is your favorite part about homecoming? Have you been here before? Or is this your first time? I've been here before. My favorite part about homecoming, of course, the homecoming game, but then also just the people here and everything that's happening around is really fun to. What about you? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just really fun to be here and it's with everything. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and tell me, do you guys play football at home? Are you guys any good? I play for my school team. I play flag football, but I'm kind of horrible at it. <laughs> and what are your dreams for the future? Do you want to be on that field one day, throwing that ball? 100%. Well, more like running with it, but <laughs> throwing. Yeah, I would say that. Well, one day when I come back as an alumni, I hope to see you guys on that field. Homecoming in a few years, right? Let's do it. Okay, Skylar. 
Yes, I am having a great time. This is my first homecoming. This isn't Justin's, however. This is Justin's third homecoming? Third homecoming, yes. Yes, it's so fun to actually be here. I feel like a lot of us who started in the 2020 semester didn't really get that fun for the first year that we've been building up on since then and since things are returning to, you know, the after of everything. So how do you guys feel back in back into the groove of things? Do you feel like you're getting there? Do you feel like we have a go? Yeah, I just feel like it's really nice being back and everything happening now. I don't understand, I agree. Just everything's back and it feels nice to slowly come back to what it used to be. And who are you here with today? Who's who's here with you? We're here with our dad and stepmom. Nice. And our dad, our stepmom, and our baby sister, and a bunch Aww. of my dad's and stepmom's friends. <laughs> so it really is like a whole out, a whole family outing for you guys, a whole community event. This is exactly what we love to see at homecoming, and that's what brings everyone here. It's what unites us all. Sea Wolf Nation, right, Skylar? Yes. <laughs> Do you guys know any Stony Brook chants? <laughs> so our main one is our main one is what's a sea wolf and you answer no? I'm a sea wolf okay let's try it so you say what's a sea wolf I'm a sea wolf then we're gonna say what's your occupation a woo a woo a woo can you do that for us amazing okay what's a sea wolf I'm a sea wolf what's, what's a sea wolf <laughs> two times you do it two times okay, okay. I'm a sea wolf and what's, what's your occupation? occupation? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, they are ready. They are ready to apply and they are joining us here today. Um, I hope to see you in my classes soon. Honestly, at this point, that, that was your initiation. That was the entire application process you're in. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you guys so much. Welcome back to you guys in the studio. <laughs> Thanks so much, Justin. It's nice to see that homecoming is uniting all generations, young and old, to gather here in the Stony Brook community. And aren't they just adorable? And coming up next, Justin Mitzelmaker is at Laval Stadium and something's cooking. Stay with us after the break. Welcome back to the Stony Brook Media Group's Homecoming Live Show. We, know, we now go back to the tailgate where Justin Mitzelmaker has, you know, some good talking to an icon of the Stony Brook community. The delicious barbecue that we have cooking up right over my shoulder this past week leading up to Homecoming. I had the yeah, honor it wasn't to moving. talk to one of the most iconic and one of I the most honorary people of all time. Play. He is one of the most recognizable faces of Jasmine Cafe, which is a very popular uh, Asian fusion eatery on our campus. His name is Mr. Kim, and I hope you learn a little bit about him. Here we go. At SVU's Jasmine Cafe, a few faces are as recognizable as this one. With his big personality and fast shopping skills, Mr. Kim is the go-to star chef for hundreds of hungry sea wolves. There's only one king of hibachi at SBU. And you can eat a little bit crunchy. And he knows just about everyone. Just now in our three students, I know them already. There's one guy that is there's a Dominicano, and I speak in the Spanish. But not everyone knows his story. Yeah, I came here to 1986. I was born in Korea. Uh, I, ha I had you know, the poor brother, but you know, my mom only teach me you know, the food. She taught me that you know, food is not only eat, food is in you know, heart and the love. Jasmine Cafe is one of the few eateries with a global cuisine 
on a campus made up of roughly 17% international students. With his robust hibachi menu, Mr. Kim is set on creating a home away from home for everyone. Korean yeah, English and Chinese and Spanish, and you know, some in a Philippine students and I speak in a Philippines. I speak in the, you know, the Polish people come Polish people, but they come from you know, the, you know, their country. Sometimes, and, you know, they miss you know, the parents and the friends, right? I'm going to try the best and I tell them, happy everybody. And it's not just his food that keeps seawolves coming back. It's the community he creates. He's like my uncle or something. Really sweet. He wants to know about, like, like us personally and our day and makes it makes me feel really happy to see that he's quite passionate about making the food for us and it always t ends up really well. I get excited because I know that chicken teriyaki is going to be the best. He makes it the best. Hearing Mr. Kim's cooking philosophy, I had to try his signature chicken teriyaki for myself. Beautiful. Just take a look at this sauce, this rice, this chicken cooked to perfection. I'll definitely be coming back for more meals as a future alumni. And as for Mr. Kim, he's dedicated to bringing a taste of home to SBU until his retirement. Justin Mitzelmaker, Stony Brook Media Group. All right, so we are keeping the food train going because we officially have snagged a bunch of grub from the official tailgate barbecue. And I'm joined now with Skylar Day Harmon. Hello, hello. And we are going to be doing a live taste test for all of you today. Okay, first on the menu, Skylar, let's start with the fish and chips, right. a classic, a staple. Delightful, yes. It looks let's like they come with waffle fries. They're going to mm -hmm. be, I would assume, some sort of battered, a beer battered, I would guess. Yes. And they come with all sorts of delightful accoutrements. We have coleslaw, we have lemon, we have tartar sauce. Absolutely delightful. Amazing. Let's take a bite of the fish. Skylar, grab a piece. So I can't have fish and chips without some good old tartar yeah. sauce. What about you? Are you a fan of tartar sauce? A must and some lemon. So it's Perfect. Perfect. Right. A little drizzle of lemon. Woo. Wonderful. Tartar sauce for you, my friend. Perfect. Cheers. Delicious. Cheers. Mm. Oh, my God. We have been hungry out here, waiting for this moment. And that first bite took us over the edge. Phenomenal. Fried to perfection, perfectly juicy and meaty on the inside. Delicious. I am interested in this coleslaw here because I don't know if it's more of a mayonnaise base or a vinegar base, but either way, I am excited. It looks a little bit on the lighter side, so That's probably a vinegar base. That's what I was guessing too. Let's find out. Ready? Definitely vinegar. Wow. Absolutely stunning following that fish and chip. Amazing. Delightful. Onto right? the fries. Yes, absolutely. I am a sucker for a waffle fry. Me as well. What's your favorite dipping sauce? Probably honey mustard, but I will settle for tartar sauce today happily. I am also a big fan of honey mustard, um, but we don't have any today. And like you said, tartar sauce never fails. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Yum. A fry. It's a fry. It's a great fry. What more can we say? Yes, delightful. Okay. On to the next. Let's try a sandwich. Right. This is maybe a two hand operation. A two hand oh. operation. Yes. Bear with us. Yeah. Pick up yours. I'll grab mine. It's like eggplant. Oh, thank you. It is eggplant. It is eggplant. So we're just gonna put the stick down. Yep. Look at this. Crunchy, crunchy, light. Delightful. Delightful. I mean, it looks really good. It looks very Fragrant. It smells very fragrant and it looks very vivid and colorful with all the veggies. So we're going to take a bite and let you know. Mm. We're doing a little taste of everything. It's all really good. Hello. You are on camera right now. What is your name? My name is Vivian. Go Seawolf. I'm a Seawolf. You're a Great. Welcome back. Amazing. Welcome back. What year? 
uh, 2005. Wow. Welcome Woo! home. Welcome home. Go see Wolf. <laughs> All right. Okay. Sandwich, really good. Vinegary, fresh, light. Yummy. I'm moving on to pasta salad, or excuse me, potato, potato salad. salad. It looks like we have all sorts of good veggies in here. We have some celery I'm seeing, some tomatoes. I'm guessing another like vinegar, uh, mustard dressing. Mm -hmm. Let's have, have a bite, yes, yeah. Absolutely. I have my potato salad here as well. We're gonna dig in. I'll grab this one, don't worry about it. All right. Perfect. All right. Cheers. Cheers. So good. I definitely want to go eat more. And no homecoming is complete yeah. without a big, juicy burger to bite into. We're going to do the honors. Should we split both sides? Go ahead. It's all me? Okay. Thank you. We have some guacamole. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you so much, Justin. All of that food looks really good. Can you please bring some back to us? Please, we're starving here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're gonna throw over to Andrew, who's at Laval Stadium with the marching band. What's up, Andrew? Well, we have the marching band who's about to perform. I'm um, very excited. Um, and while, you know, I'm just 19 years old, but this reminds me of the good old days when, uh, when I played saxophone for my marching band in high school. Uh, man, I miss that. But uh, I really love the marching band here. They play good music, great performances. Um, unlike, you know, the, the Stony Brook football, they, they're very worth the oh. watch. He they're very worth the watch. The marching so. band gives great performances, unlike Stony Brook football. <laughs> so, it's a great performance right now, guys. So, are we reading the see their, teleprompter? Yeah. As, as you can see, they're going in for um, formation and all that. So, back to the studio. We are pumped for homecoming. This is our first year playing in the Colonial Athletic Association, otherwise known as the CAA. The Black Bears are 2-4 and four and our Seawolves are bringing the heat. <laughs> Let's get a breakdown of game predictions from Nick Siegewind. Nick, what are we expecting from today's game? It's going to be a good one, that's for sure. <laughs> Thank you, Daniela. It's almost that time of year, Seawolves. We are gearing up for an eventful homecoming game. The main Black Bears are facing our Stony Brook Seawolves. We are having an unfortunate season right now, currently standing at zero wins and six losses. But our homecoming record is promising, currently at 12 wins and three losses. We have Charlie McKee getting his second career start at quarterback. He performed a decent game against Fordham despite the loss, completing 18 passes with two touchdowns and 239 yards. We are 4-5 and five against the Black Bears, hoping to make it even this afternoon. We need to establish the run game early. I think our primary weapon on offense today is Jaden Cook. He has explosive play when he has the time to run. The ground game is going to be our friend today, specifically the outside run game. Our past six games, we continuously ran up the middle, getting short yard gains, which always led us to going three and out every trip. Establishing the outside run gives us more space to run because of the lack of containment the Black Bears have. For the passing game, we need to attack the flats so we can stick to controlling the outside and aim for those slant routes along with those in and out routes towards the hash. These passes allow our receivers, specifically Sean Harris Jr., who can be another X factor today. He can create a lot of opportunities with his shifty play style. On defense, we are lacking simple communication, giving up the deep ball, letting our opponents convert third and fourth down situations, and running us up and down the field. In coach Chuck Priori's era, we have won four of our last five homecoming games. Okay. So let's go get another one. Yes, thank you, Nick. I really hope some of that homecoming luck that we have today with all of our Sea Wolves, new, old, current, really rubs off on them and we can secure a victory today. Oh yeah, let's get that win. <laughs> and thank you so much, everyone, for joining us for the Stony Brook Media Group's homecoming live show. I'm Anthony Johnson. And I'm Danielle Rodriguez. Enjoy today's game, everybody.